Michael Forward for Chet TV and Peace FM, and joining me in the studio today is the mayor of Chetwin, Alan Coutre, and of course, uh, Mr. Mayor, it's been a week uh, since the uh, announcement from Canfor about the upcoming shutdown of the uh, local mill. So what's been going on in the community since that time? Well, uh, first of all, I'd like to say that uh, one of the major things that happens, and uh, we don't like it, but uh, it's part of, seems like, our lives is rumors. And some of the stuff that we talk about uh, outside business it seems to be uh, having a little bit of our rumor mill go, and it's kind of uh, ironic. It says a rumor mill, and we have to close down, and we're having a permanent closure at the Ganford Sawmill. But anyway, I'd just like to say that uh, the rumors uh, that happen that's people's ideas, people's opinions, and uh, that is theirs until there's facts. And the fact today is that the permanent closure of our mill, uh, Canfor Mill in town here, which will affect 157 employees. Uh, according to our, our talk with uh, Canfor, it's uh, going to be 140 because 17 will be kept on as part of the logging division because uh, Canfor does have a TFL, that's tree farm license, to operate in uh, BC and in our area. So that will help out our local, uh, other local mill, which is a West Fraser mill, uh, to obtain fiber through uh, through the TFL. Hopefully that's the way it'll work because uh, they're in talks right now. I can't speak for West Fraser. I cannot speak for Canfor. I just know what the facts are that the mill is shutting. But when they do talk to us, uh, which they uh, talked to us uh, last week, Canfor uh, CEO and their uh, HR department, they came and sat with council and mayor and discussed a few items and that was one of the items was that uh, the fiber will stay into peace hopefully it'll stay into peace because i do see trains with uh with fiber on them moving out uh, through our community so this is one of the points that i made clear to uh, the ceo of don kane of canfor that we don't want this to happen here if it's going to uh, west fraser which is uh, part of our community, that's totally awesome. It, uh, at least we will uh, have uh, our sawmill operating at the West Fraser uh, operations here in town. But on the other hand, there's another canter mill that's operating in Fort St. John, and it will uh, rece receive some of the fiber that uh, the tree farm license does uh, give uh, the opportunity to canter to move that around. So hopefully it doesn't go too far and uh, to con have uh, the sawmill workers in Fort St. John and in Chetwin continue to operate the ones that uh, they do have uh, operating right now. So it uh, it's going to uh, cease operations at the beginning of April at the sawmill itself. You have sawmill, then we dry the wood, and then we uh, continue on to the planer. And the planer uh, will plane it, dry uh, the dried uh, wood, and they will uh, uh, sell or ha have it uh, shipped out. So the timeline is beginning of April, first week in April, the sawmill. The final will be out of the planer, end of April, first uh, week in uh, May. So uh, that's a pretty short window here for people to get adjusted. It's a terrible shock uh, to the community. Uh, the dollars itself uh, from one paycheck uh, and for people that are just getting started, they're going to have to go look. And the people that are 10 to 20 years and yet not uh, close to retirement, another shock. What do we do now? So that's where uh, the community and uh, the government has re reached out, can for itself, and uh, local union, uh, the steel workers, are having discussions with uh, with Canfor, and the government will get involved here. They've been contacting uh, the uh, the district office, seeing how we can assist, and there's anything we can do at our uh, office, we are going to. So this is part of uh, the process of helping our uh, uh, citizens at Chatwin that contributed over the years, and some of them 47 years, and maybe a little bit longer than that working at that mill. This mill's been here 60 years. So it's uh, got a legacy here of uh, having a good place to go to work. I don't believe they've ever uh, neglected on paying somebody. There's never been a stop payment on any check from Canfor, 
And I'm not saying that they've been the best employer, but they strive to be the best employer uh, in situations. But they did have closures before. So a year ago when they started uh, the operations of uh, moving out of the country and into the United States. So some of the stuff that we uh, see now with the lack of fiber and in their press release, they state the lack of fiber to operate. And, they, and we're not just talking a small mom and pop operation, we're talking worldwide. They're in many countries. So they give us a little release uh, stating that though we've uh, spent, you could quote them, $2.1 billion in BC in the last 10 years. So, you know, you, you break that down, a uh, big operation like that, you know, so uh, the writing's been there for a little while, and if we read it properly, the wall tells us that it's been uh, trending in that direction. Uh, two weeks ago, we had the PG Pulp Mill operation uh, being told that they were being permanently shut down, and then uh, with our uh, operation being told last week, so did uh, Houston, and they're uh, indefinite. They're uh, looking to move some of their uh, technology into today's technology and having to uh, process uh, at a different level. So it, it's a different scenario, but people are going to be out of work for a little while there too. For sure. Are you uh, happy with how Canfor has been communicating with you folks so far on this issue? Uh, yes, I, I, I'm happy with uh, what they've been doing with their uh, PR uh, and our HR or whatever uh, the communications with us, it's totally, yeah, like, uh, I, d I don't know, uh, I've never been in negotiation with somebody uh, that's shut down, so I don't know where that, that question that you've asked me, have they been good, so I, I don't have no gauge to gauge it on. I'm just saying, are you happy with the how the communication has flown so far? Are they, does, they, doesn't seem like they've been holding anything back, or they've been giving you the facts. Yes, yes, I, I agree with that point that, that they've been giving us the facts, yes. Okay. Uh, so, obviously, you've been out in the community talking to community members affected by this. What's the general feeling in the community right now? To be blunt, shitty. And I don't, uh, I don't want to make it sound like, oh, well, we were, the, we're doing our best doing this. It's never our best when we lose a, lose a job. And uh, families affected. It's not only uh, the count for employee, but it's uh, if he's got a spouse or she's got a husband that works in a different sector, we lose two. So you know that that's uh, what's been going around. Is uh, when I address the rumor thing, that's what's been going around too. When I talk to people about uh, sale of this and sale of that, and we're talking about the mill, and until until we know the facts, and the only fact that I know right now is that we're. Uh, closing a mill in our community. That's the fact that I know. So all the other stuff about the rumors and what we hear and what the innuendos are going on about how uh, Chetwin and uh, council, mayor and council are addressing this. This is some of the stuff that uh, needs to be out, put out there that we advocate for our citizens. We, uh, we feel when something happens like this. It deeply affects us as uh, people as uh, because we are citizens of Chetwin and we uh, don't like it when something happens to this magnitude. It's terrible. How has the response been at the uh, provincial and federal level to this? As I see it right now, they're communicating with us. Until I see the, the actual uh, uh, plan of uh, how they're going to, uh, they talked about assistance in the financial part of it. Uh, one of the major things, I believe, is the bridging of a pension. That meaning if you're uh, 50 and you've got five more years where you can, you can collect a pension, I believe that you will, they will uh, make that up. So if you're getting, uh, I guess, for example, $1,200, and if they bridge that to 55 if you're 50, they'll possibly give you another $500 so that you'll be getting uh, $1,700 for, for a month. So, you know, that's, you know, uh, those numbers that I gave, gave you there, just for example, that's one paycheck. When you, when you work in a sawmill for two weeks, 
that's just one paycheck. So that's 50% of your income gone. So that, that's, that's a big number for, for people that are mortgage and people who have the, their vehicles. Some have two because they work two jobs. I mean, work uh, two, two jobs for one household. And that, that's a big, uh, big thing for them to just say, well, half of it is gone and half of that uh, paycheck was paying for mortgage, paying for uh, vehicles. And uh, out in the north here, we do have quads, snowmobiles, and uh, we, we, we like the outdoors. So this is a big, uh, big blow. For sure. Uh, is there anything that you'd like to say to members of the community aside from, you know, the fact that we need to get facts before we kind of move on? Is there anything else that you'd like to add to that? Well, I, I would like to add that the resilience of a uh, northern community and uh, uh, we talk about how neighborly we are and uh, how we will pick up each other when things go. But when we uh, come against an uh, obstacle like this, where, where it's a worldwide event that happens that I'm not saying it's a, it's a storm of a great magnitude, but it feels like that here in Chetwin. And it's quite, uh, quite alarming. But as I said, the resilience of Northern people, we, we will uh, continue to move forward. And if people have to move, they will move. If people have to find other jobs in the community, they will, because that's what we do here in Chetwin and in other Northern communities. Uh, as for uh, the mayor, uh, my uh, my thing with this is that I'm deeply disappointed in the fact that fiber has been taken for 60 years out of my community, out of our community, out of the possession of British Columbians. And then after 60 years, I I believe that some of the stuff we need to address is that the companies that we do business with in BC and Others, uh, non-governmental organizations, have to realize that we are people. We are people here in Chatwin. We are people in the north. We survive on uh, what we do in the north. So that, that's just my, my opinion on how uh, things go in the world. Sometimes it becomes a small word in the world, and uh, it becomes personal sometimes. And that's uh, my uh, state on what I see and how I believe but we've been through it before and uh, probably won't be the last time something happens to a small community. And uh, time will tell. Is there anything else you'd like to touch on? Uh, no. Okay. Well, thank you so much for uh, joining us today and talking about this. Obviously, there's a lot of things that are going to come out over the next little while in terms of future plans and how it's uh, affecting the community. So we'll be sure to keep in contact with you and uh, get updates as that happens. Okay, thank you. Uh, there's been a lot of media out there uh, that's uh, contacted me, and I'd like to thank uh, Peace FM for this opportunity to come tell the, what we know and what we heard from uh, Canfor. And uh, once we get in contact with IWA and the government, uh, we will contact uh, Peace FM and Chat Radio and make sure that uh, we uh, Chat TV make sure that we're uh, up to date, keeping you up to date with that because people need to know the facts. For sure. Well, thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay.